because it's no fun when your spirit is undone. Unraveling down the hole in the barrel of a shotgun. You got to thinking you're better than me. Look inside yourself and what do you see? Well, happy, happy day. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Snapper Lytical. I know, all of this sniffing and throat sounding all deep. Like, what's going on? Every time I fly, guys, I don't know. Since I stopped wearing my mask, it seems like I catch a cold. Whatever is going on, sneezing, folks. And I had a mask, but I didn't want to be suffocated. But you know what? Next time you go, it's going to put that mask on when you fly on the plane. Okay, so what are we talking about today? Guys, can you believe that they are actually thinking about Trump being the House Speaker? I had to talk about this. We got a Chop this up. OMG. I mean, let's get into this video. Can you believe this? This is like, what? Let's bring in our next guest. He's just launched a bid to be the next Speaker of the House because the job opened up. I don't know if you heard. Uh, he's now with the exclusive interview with Congressman Jim Jordan. Congressman, great to see you. Good to you, were, you were on the fence the night of the ouster. What changed your mind to say, I, I want to be Speaker? You need someone who can unite the conference and I think just as importantly unite the conservative and Republican movement across this country. Uh, that's what I think I can do. That's why I'm running for the job. I like the job I had. Uh, chairman of the Judiciary Committee, Chairman of the Select Committee on the Weaponization yeah, he of the was Government, good. doing the work he there. Play. But I do think we I have to have him. someone who can bring like our team him. together. He's... I think I'm best equipped to do that. The eight people who voted in a way that I, I disagreed with, yeah. we got to bring them into the fold. I think I'm best equipped to do that so that we can then go do the things we told the American people we would do for them. And the first thing I would focus on, the very first thing I would focus on is one sentence. No money can be used to process or release into this country any new migrants. You have to change the equation. You have to stop what's going on there in Texas and across our country. That is the first bill we should do. Attach that to a spending bill and get that done for the America. And everyone knows this is the central issue. Eric Adams, the mayor of New York, is in Latin America as we speak because this problem is so big. We need to address that. We need to get the Democrats on board to do what their constituents yes. want them to do Let's as well. Together. You shouldn't be penalized for the good job that you did on judiciary because people, Americans, the Republicans love to see what you're doing to go after the Biden family and get to the bottom of of what they have done with their taxes, if they've done anything wrong, if it was pay for play and all of that kind of thing. But if you do leave, if you become know what speaker and you have to leave judiciary, what will happen to that committee now? Will those investigations still continue? They sure will. We've, we, we've been working with the speaker's office all along. Many times you have to consult house counsel when you're doing all these depositions, all these subpoenas that get sent out. So we, we've had that already happen. If in fact I get the privilege of being the next speaker of the house, we will continue to work with the team on judiciary and oversight and ways and means as we do our investigative work, as we do our constitutional duty of oversight of the executive branch, that will continue. In fact, I was in a deposition I was in a deposition two days ago with the U.S. attorney from the District of Columbia, Matthew Graves, who declined to partner with David Weiss. I was in that deposition when all this was happening here uh, in the House. So, yes, that, that has to continue because that's our job. Uh, you know, Mr. Jordan, that uh, moderates have said they've been very vocal. They will not vote for anybody unless they change that rule on one vote can get somebody uh, vacated from the seat, which is essentially how the uh, capital coup happened the other day. So moderates want to change the rules, but for conservatives, that is a deal breaker. So, and there is, I was reading this morning in Axios, I believe, there is uh, expectations are at rock bottom that the civil war between the many factions of the Republican Party can be fixed by next week. Well, we have to fix it. And I said this on the House floor on January 3rd when I nominated Speaker McCarthy. I said it a couple days ago. Any differences that exist in the Republican Party pale pale in comparison to the differences between us and the radical left, which now unfortunately controls the Democrat Party. Hmm. We had better stick together. We had better come together to fight for the things that make our country the greatest nation ever and the things the American people elected us to do. Amen. Again, I think I, I can do that if that if the conference wants that rule changed. I'm not if I'm speaker, I'm not going to go to Democrats to get that done. No, no way. We will have to decide as 222 Republicans, are we going to change that? That's the only way it gets done Let's if go. that's what the conference wants. Okay. So that's something that has to, again, you have to bring the team together. That's together. what we have to focus on so that we can help the American people and do what we said we were going to do. Y'all, this is great. 
I really like him. I have been watching the you know the whole time what's been going on with Biden now how they have been bringing things to the floor and as during the trials and you know the hearings in Congress he came with it I mean I so I was like okay so you think he gonna be the house speaker let's go let's go or they got Trump up here though. I'm trying to hear what that's about congressman I'm here with the folks from the great state of Texas they want to know if you guys are gonna start fighting for them like the unity is okay but at what cost are you guys going to start doing the things that y'all said y'all are going to balance budgets, getting this crime under control, the inflation that's wrecking them, and of course, the border has hit Texas so much. So what is the yeah. plan to get the caucus in line with the yes. conservative agenda that all of you guys ran on? You, t you take the case to the American people. You tell the American people, we've passed so many good, we've already sent over the border security immigration enforcement legislation. You go to the American people and you say, tell the United States Senate to take up that legislation. Now, they might amend it. They might make changes to it. Then it comes back. You go to conference committee, and then you have a, a final package that you vote on. That's how our system works. Mm -hmm. But we got to take the case to the American people. That's so right. they put the pressure on the United States Senate to do their job That's and get right. past the things that we need to get past. And in divided government, we're not going to get everything, but we have to go fight for what we want so we get most of what we want. That's right. Of what we want. But right now, we're that. not getting any of that because they won't take up the legislation. They won't do their job. So that is how you, that's, that's how our system works. Mm -hmm. The greatest system ever. It's cumbersome, but it's the best. Let's use the system that we have, our government system, our legislative system, to get those things done. We've already sent it there. Take up the bill, Chuck Schumer. Deal with the legislation, send it back to us, and we'll figure out the differences and get something done for the American people. So Thomas Massey, Daryl Issa, Mike Carey have all, uh, have all said they're going to support you right off the bat. So why are you better than somebody I know you like, Steve Scalise, who seems to be the next in line? Uh, you're right. Steve Scalise is a friend of mine. We, it's Kevin and Steve and I, we all came in the same Congress. Uh, Steve's an American hero. But again, I think I'm better, better equipped to unite the conference, bring the conservatives along that I'm close to with the moderates. I've had great conversations with the moderates. Jeff Van Drew. Jeff Van Drew is supporting me. Jeff Van Drew was a Democrat five years ago. Switch parties, now a great member of our conference. He's supporting me. I think we can do that. That's what we have to do so that we can get to the real goal, which is those things we told the American people we were going to do for them. Y'all, so I really like him explaining the process of really how it works. And we know we have three branches of government, judiciary, legislative, and then executive, right? So I do know and I remember that the legislative branch, they're the ones that write the laws. So I'm now I'm clear that they all I mean, it's like it's like tic tac toe. They all work together. It's all connected. I mean, you can't have one without the other. So working together in, within your own party, as well as trying to get the other party to agree. So he just said that they're putting it out there. We once they get it out there, then we vote on it. OK, come on, let's go. But just the way the process, the way the process goes in our country is still like the most advantageous and the most constitutional. But it's, it's for the people. The way that we do things in our government has been for the people, not just for one particular person. So I love how he explained this and he's showing us that we can still have faith in our in our government. We have to keep the right people in place and allow them to do what they do and allow us, the people, to do what we do. Let's talk. Let's get out here and write the letters, call, get on these um, broadcasts, go to the White House, talk to these people, talk to your um, legislative, executive and judiciary uh, government, Congress, Senate. Talk to them and let them know how you feel. You know, schedule an appointment, email, so many ways. But we have to use our voices in a way that they know so we can continue to reach out to them because they want to help us, y'all. They want to help us. And we have to have, we have to look to the, to the most, we have to have an optimistic mindset. We can't just be doomsday, you know, and you, you guys know that ain't me. It's all about still trusting and having faith in God and knowing that he is still over but he also has his people in place that's going to look out for us, y'all. Come on. You know, we've, we've watched Joe Biden. He came out of Afghanistan and, and thought, told, told everyone that was a success. Then with the border, he says it's not a crisis. It's, it's secure. The border's not open. And now they're saying we have to build a wall. They ran on never building a wall. We will not build a wall. And this morning, you have his team. Mayorkas yep. is saying there's an acute and immediate need 
to construct physical barriers and roads to prevent unlawful entries. Yeah, thank Why change yeah, the scene now? Because Democrats are telling, because the problem is so severe, exactly. the problem is so serious, they're not doing the right thing. They're not doing what President Trump said we should have been doing all along, what we were doing. Hello. So that, that's how bad this situation Seven is. And again, if million we people the legislation later. that I think fundamentally changes the equation. Let's when go. We say you cannot use American tax dollars to allow any more migrants to come and you stop the problem. And then you deal with what's happened already. That's how you that's how you fix things. And so that's what we need to do. Well, let's talk a little bit about aid for Ukraine, because there are a number of conservatives who say in your conference that they will sink any candidate for speaker who does support aid for Ukraine. So where are you on that? Say sink. I've been clear all along. Why should we be sending American tax dollars to Ukraine when we don't even know what the goal is? No one can tell me what the objective is. Is it, is it some kind of negotiated peace? Is it driving them out of the eastern Ukraine? Is it driving them out of Crimea, which they've had for 10 years now, or they took during the Obama administration? What is the objective? And so until you can tell me the goal, I don't think we should continue to send money there, particularly when we have the problems we have on our border. That's so right. that's fundamental. Uh, I just think that's front and center. And then second, how is the money that's already been sent, how, is it, how has it been spent? Right. What kind of waste is going? Those are two fundamental questions that I think the American taxpayers want to know the answers to before they send any more of their hard-earned money there, particularly you're sending money there to protect Ukraine's border when we right. got the situation we have on our border. So sure. those are the fundamental questions that we should get answered before we even think about sending more money. Lawrence? Ooh, child. So, Congressman, uh, the last he two times I mouthful. remember talking to you before, you said you didn't want the job. You didn't want it. Many people tried to get you to run for the speaker's post. Mm, didn't so know why that. why now? Why is it the moment for Jim Jordan to lead the conference? Hindsight, somebody brother. Somebody has to bring our team together. Hindsight. Because if we don't come together, we're not going to get done what the American people know needs to be done, Hindsight. what's good for our nation. Somebody has to do it. I think I'm equipped to do it. That's why I'm running. I think I'm equipped to go take the message to the American people about why what we're doing is so darn important. It's, it's really, those are the two fundamental questions. Who can unite the team and who can go take our message to the people? That's, that's what this election's about. And I hope my colleagues will support me. And that's what, that's what I'm asking and talking to them with all day long. So much so I'm already starting to lose my voice. Did not know that they wanted him before. And he was like, oh. No thanks. But you know, a lot of times people, when we make decisions in the beginning, our minds can change. You know, things happen, instances, experiences, circumstances, situations, and you have hindsight. You have hindsight and the light bulb goes off. You have a light bulb moment, come to Jesus moment. It's like, wait a minute, I can do this. I want to do this. They need me in this role. I'll be absolutely great, so why not now? I love it. A little bit more, and we're gonna wrap this thing on up. So, so uh, Congressman, let me ask you a scenario. You're trying to get these appropriate, you become speaker next week. The appropriations bills aren't done. The deadline is here. Do you do a deal to keep the government open for an additional CR? Or do you do a deal with Democrats? Or do you let the government shut down? I think the first thing you do is you pass the bipartisan bill that's in the Senate. We take that bill up here in the House and we pass it. It's the No Shutdown Act. Senator Langford, Senator Hessen have that, have that bill. It's, it's good legislation. I like what Senator Langford said about it. He said, look, this is like if you don't get your work done in school, you stay after class and get it done. That bill says if we get to the end of the fiscal year, we haven't done the appropriations bills, the government stays funded. But we stay here round the clock until we do our job. Yes. That would take this whole shutdown politics, shutdown scenario, <laughs> shutdown stuff off the table. You do that, and then you focus on the legislation. And if, frankly, if we need some kind of continuing resolution or some stopgap measure, I think it should go all the way into next year. I told my colleagues this because it, the way the debt ceiling deal was done, if you do a spending bill into the next year, there's an automatic cut that kicks in. And that's an incentive for us to get our work done and mm. focus on the policies we went on, the 12 right. appropriation bills. Right. That's the strategy, the, in my mind, the only strategy that makes sense. And that, that funding bill that goes into next year, everyone's voted for that. The Senate, two-thirds of the Senate voted for that, two-thirds of the House voted for that. Joe Biden signed it. So that's something everyone supported. If we do that and have that 1% cut hanging over everyone's head, I think that's the incentive to get the, get our work done, get our job done, and let the system work the way it's supposed to. Just okay, guys, I'm going to stop it right here. I love that. So he's saying get it done by any means necessary, period, 
period and period i love it guys this was really really good news i really love the fact that he wants to get it done order uber eats whatever you need. bring your sack lunch get the vending machine game going whatever you need to do so we can get this done to serve our people i love that guys let's get in this comment section what do you think about him actually being speaker of the house and then i saw where they were talking about trump as well so how do you like that i mean come on i appreciate you guys hanging out with me let's dive into this i actually think he'd be a great speaker if you have somebody else in mind please put it in the comment sections i'll see you on the next video guys and don't forget to share it and turn on the bell see you soon